Uh, hey! Bro, hello, I mean, hello. you can always do it later on. Like, fucking... Oof. How's it going, gamers? Is it hello. Thursday, dude? Is it is, is it Apparently. Thursday? Is it Dungeon Apparently. Discourse Day, dude? That's I mean, crazy. It's wearing a polo? Day, My man. Uh, I'm not. I'm actually in my work shirt Oh, still. it's an actual, like, shirt. God damn. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's how you know it's been a, a stress-free day <laughs> is when I don't even have time to get changed before Discourse. Amen. Wouldn't that be a stressful day? That's yeah, the he's, joke. he's being sarcastic. It, 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 oh, Ethan being sarcastic? <laughs> that hurt, dude. Americans really don't get sarcasm, huh? They do. No, it's just the same. You're using the same voice. Yeah, so, you know. you, you're very monotonous when it comes to a lot of things. So, like, I, I definitely get it. I, I, got I mean, it, that's, just, I it. that's just British, but... No. That's um, you. No, I mean, to be fair, a lot of people in the world have had a worse day today than me, so... Yeah, that's true, man. Like, the world's I probably should have win. Yeah, fucking mess today, dude. I woke up. At so least we're gonna escape Elden Ring comes out to save us, you know? At least Elden Ring comes out in four hours. <laughs> Yo, Elden Ring <laughs> turns out to be really good. Putin calls off the invasion so that he can play more. Dude, imagine. <laughs> like, fuck, dude, if, dude, okay, if he plays Elden Ring, dude... Uh, no, that's, no, 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 we're not gonna... No, 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 Stop. He's a bad man. Stop it. Um, okay. We're here to talk about D&D stuff. Uh, before we get going, do we have any announcements that you want to make? Uh, my Hades shit arrived. To, uh, my, Hades, my Hellboy shit arrived today. Oh, shit. The okay. Kickstarter arrived back a million months ago. Fucking eons ago, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they had funny. shipping problems because, you know, Brexit and then... Fucking EU sanctions and shit. Yo, and... Unboxing on stream right now. Let's go. Right now. Yeah, let's let's go. do it. Fuck yeah. Uh, I don't have a fucking pair of scissors or anything. Make sure you cover up your mic. address and stuff. Smile. Hey, or don't. Look, I mean, if someone can go on fucking stream and enhance the bit that says they fucking, will. they absolutely will. Like, it's if got we like were, if we were a more popular stream, absolutely someone would. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm almost tempted to do it just because it'd be funny. <laughs> I thought it was weird that, like, so the invoice is obviously on the outside of the box, which a lot of places stick it to the outside of the box. Yeah, but you can clearly on, see. On Cam Shatter, okay, he's just like, he's struggling, all right? Let, let the man struggle. Yeah, wait, why don't I'm... you have a knife at your desk? There you go. I have a, a butter knife. A uh, butter knife, dude? Come on, get like a fucking machete out. Buy me one then, pussy. Do I just dox not... Ethan? I could, I couldn't, it's very funny. I think, I feel like, I feel like Ethan knows my so we... address. Do you know I that? do. Right? Yeah. Ethan so doesn't know mine, so I can dox him. I, I don't have Sokos. I think Soko might be the only person who I don't have the address of in. Awesome, dude. I'm the only person that won't get docked when Ethan eventually gets kicked from the campaign for True. making too many bad puns. True. <laughs> the worst part is it's not even me anymore. Like, everyone else has started doing dude, okay. this. Dude, okay. Laura, Laura has started like making some bad puns. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, like, we talk about a D&D campaign, and Ethan, uh, he backed a Hellboy-themed, like, tabletop 5e supplement thingy kickstarter ages ago and it finally came so he's unboxing it on stream dude my round spherical dice are supposed to be here in the next couple months apparently too Ooh. this is the first thing this is the messenger bag with a uh, car it looks, like a, looks like a fucking mre dude <laughs> it's uh it's like um it's got the emblem of the fucking organization in hellboy on it oh i've never played it's hellboy, cool as shit so. Did OG uh, Hellboy with fucking Ron Perlman? Fire. Fire movie. Absolutely. Remake, not as good. No, I heard that- I haven't seen it, but I heard that it's not great. It's not- like, there's worse movies out there. Fuck me, this is- I mean, there's always gonna be something worse, right? But, but like, it's, it's not, not quite good. the room. Put know? it this way, if you watched the original Hellboys and enjoyed them, don't watch it. It'll I feel like that's the problem sad. with remakes in general. It, even with games a lot of the time. Like, they just don't hit the same standard. Blade like, Runner, Final Fantasy VII, Blade Runner was really I didn't think the remake was that good. Right? It was really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't care for the original one, so... That looks really good. Uh, so that's my DM screen. That's nice. fucking sick. Uh, character, character sheets. sheets. They follow 5e rule set. Beautiful. Nice. Yo, oh, you run it. Go run that module on stream for charity. I select? genuinely might. For charity, I select? genuinely might. Uh, oh boy, the role playing game. You can make that. Well, a, dude, a, I was. You can make that an incentive, Ethan. I've put so many incentives oh, okay. up on the thing. Dude, I was so tempted 
to buy the uh, Dark Souls 5e role playing thing that James linked me to. I don't I remember. Have a, where I have we like were a PDF at, that but... converts a bunch of Dark Souls enemies to D and D stat blocks. But it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. What's well, I'm saying? Like, there's like a legit like Dark Souls 5e like I heard, I heard, enhancement I heard. thing that James sent me link to. So when um, Katie says it can never be worse than the Aragorn movie, Hellboy oh, remake, I would say is worse true. than the Aragorn movie. I don't know, dude. They did Aragorn terrible. I think the thing about yeah. the Aragorn movie is that. The CGI we all hated it. Well in that movie. Looks the yeah, CGI but we was terrible. We they loved didn't the books. put in any of the main fucking points of the book of the book at all. Like there were main points that they completely missed that needed to be there that they just didn't put in. Like it's nice, dude. Stupid. That's, uh, a, that's a cool little poster. This is the sleeve that comes in the book. I like the art style. Nice. The art style is dope. Yeah, the art's great. It's based on the original comics. Hell yeah. And um, this is the comics. actual book. Nice. Let still, me find dude. a good page to show off. Quick show and tell, dude. Quick, quick, just random page. Yeah. Yo, no cocks on stream. Like, so you know, in like a normal like Wizards of the Coast D and D book where you'd have like little art inserts. Yeah. In this, instead of like just standard art inserts, they have little inserts from the comics. Oh, that's dope. That's cool. Oh hell dude, yeah! That's fucking sick. What the fuck? It's really cool, actually. Um. So this is a. Uh, fucking german commander a german like nazi like occult division commander from the actual comics dude i need you to run this module on on the channel at some point i'm that so part of it. and i want to be a part of it <laughs> then there are so this is actually a source book but there are adventures in here does it nice. come with uh, uh like like I'm, I'm assuming it comes with like custom classes and shit right uh let's have a look i would imagine Character creation. they're yeah. probably like reskinned but like that's okay like custom classes, uh, maybe some, like maybe races, not so much, but custom classes would be pretty cool. So, uh, same stats. Uh, so instead of classes, you get roles, right. but they're all new. Uh, uh, instead of races, you have origins. Right. Okay. Um, so your origins: a remarkable human, which is uh, just like an agent. Um. Is there a trash can human in there? The cursed. Sounds um, well, right. Uh, the hollow. Vampire. Demon. Uh, I mean, vampire. Dude, bro. I'm, I'm a vampire. I love vampires. Uh, so much, psychic. Um, I like to give me flashbacks to campaign one. Dude, Medium, now you're reading back to vampires. Like, oh my god, bro. A ghost. Uh, there's there's sub there's sub races of ghosts. Uh, you can be fey influenced. Um, so you can be a fey creature. Uh, that's all the origin shit, and then that's got fucking backstories as well. Nice. Uh, not backstories, uh, custom oh, yeah. backgrounds. So there you uh, go, languages. boys. We have Ethan's word now. At some point, maybe not in Charity Select, hopefully in Charity Select, but if not. If not, if not then, then at some other point, Ethan's gonna run this on Charity Select. Maybe a day where you know, like, a few of us are gonna be gone, because I'm sure that it'll happen. Actually, it might be in May April because I know that me and Duke might have some uh, overlap. I don't remember when he leaves, comes back in April. I'm not sure. But, like I'm gone in Hawaii for a week. I'm not sure. I missed sure. two Read Sundays. You the roles real quick. Uh, yeah, quick, let's come over them and then we'll uh, we'll get we'll get into uh, this uh, one. Field agent, a consultant, a field analyst, an experimental engineer, operational security, or personnel development. Nice. Oh yeah. I'm so fucking excited, boys. Hell yeah, dude. All right, cool. Uh, speaking of Charity I'm Select, I have, little, I have a little announcement that I want to make regarding Charity Select. Um, I'm not sure when yet, but somewhere in the month of March, I'm going to be running uh, a one-shot uh, for Charity. Uh, at least one, maybe multiple, but at least one. Where uh, I'm, we're going to do the same recipe that is just chat can donate to the Charity and, and influence things in the game and all that stuff. But uh, I want to do it a little differently this time around. Um, I want to maybe run something that isn't necessarily core five E, just because I haven't really never I've never really done that. But um, I'm thinking of like maybe running something like there's a Witcher three. Um, like 5e supplements which looks really fucking cool and i might see if i can run that um, bruh that's perfect for you because like that's when uh when i run my campaign 
you were playing a very Witcher inspired character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like that'd be so. so he's even I got a Witcher my... butt plug. I do have a. It's a fucking wine bottle <laughs> stopper, but it looks like a butt plug. You're not wrong. But fuck. Is it just like a butt plug with like the Witcher wolf on it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> It's a it's a bottle stopper, but it's uh it, it's 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 oh, got it's the, gonna it's got stop that, your it's bottle, the, it's right? The, it's it's too close. Cone shape, it's you know too mean? close. So it's like, well, it's a butt and it has a flared base, so you know it's <laughs> butthole safe. Fuck me. Um, wait, which your with or without the bottle, plug? bottle stopper? Hold on, let me fucking see if I can find a, a picture of it. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's one of the best names we've ever had. Hold on. Honestly. There's so much shit that I have to run. I'm still working on the fucking Vampire the Masquerade setup, and like it's I'll, I'll put a link to it in, in the in the Twitch chat. That's it. But like, I I get where the butt plug idea comes from. Let me just let me just it's say that you know what I mean. Bit and you'll know if you push plug, too far but... in it. But like, it's it's cool as fuck. It's uh. It is it is ribbed for pleasure. Mm, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and you will feel the end of it. When you push yeah, too if, far. if you push it too far, you get fucking yeah. jabbed in the asshole by the fucking like spiky wolf bit. Hey, maybe that's part of the fun though. Maybe. You know? Imagine yeah. right. Imagine you're just out there fucking. You know, you're, you're in fucking. a. You've been you've been commissioned by a fairly popular game to make a wine stopper, and you're just there like, are people gonna do things with this? Just in case. Of course. I should make it friendly. Like, people do things with fucking food items. Of course they're gonna do things with People that. do things with glass bottles, so... Oh, good. Yeah, bottles feel like... Yeah, a you game. ever heard of those horror stories in the ER where they break while yeah. they're inside them? Mm. Light bulb, my guy. <clears throat> Stop. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, d d Yes, so... We play d d sometimes, guys. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to run a, a Witcher themed um, thingy. There's this, uh, like, this. I'm going to go through some of the. Everybody makes a Witcher, first of all. Everybody plays, like, a class that is the, a Witcher, but, like, everybody has, like, different types of. You know, there's different schools in the Witcher, right? So there's, yeah. like, the School of the Wolf, Which School of the They come with the shit. But, like, they. Um, so, like, as a Witcher, um, it's, it's Constitution and. Wisdom are your like proficiencies or your skills. That that checks. Uh, equipment you start with a longsword and a silvered longsword because obviously you know one for monsters, one for men. One for the men. That kind of yep. kind of vibe. Hand crossbow with twenty bolts or daggers. Um, and you start with a Witcher medallion. Uh, starting at level one, you can choose. Uh, oh no! At, sorry, at level one, you get a bunch of mutations, but they, these come at a cost. Um, so there's obviously, you know, there's dark vision, there's the disease immunity because of the fact that they, you know, they, they, they chug a lot of fucking toxins and shit, so it makes sense that they're a little more resistant to things like poison and all that stuff. Uh, they get accelerated healing, they get a plus two anytime they recover HP, which is pretty cool. Damn. Um, <clears throat> they get... It's uh, something called superior physicality. Uh, when rolling an athletics or acrobatics check, they can add an additional plus two to these rolls. Um, social stigma. Here we go. This is where it gets interesting. Witches are often viewed as monsters themselves as they were created through alchemical experimentation. This has left them appearing to be cold and emotionless, though witches do feel emotions like anger and even love, but are prone to being, uh, but are not prone to being frightened or intimidated. In situations where the Witcher emotional stability is an asset, such as not being intimidated or avoiding fear, the Witcher is at an advantage. However, if the Witcher is in a situation where they, where uh, the emotional stability is a liability, they're at disadvantage. So, for instance, if you got to roll an insight check against being intimidated, you have advantage. But if you have to roll like a persuasion check, you get disadvantage because people just don't like Witchers. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um. <laughs> Sterile, which I can never have children. <laughs> there you go. That's bullshit. Um, at level two, the Witcher learns to craft their medallion. Often, this is an item that bears the face of the Witcher school that they came from: wolf, griffin, cat. Uh, these medallions are simple to make, um, though their enchantment is known only to the Witchers. As long as Witcher concentrates, they may use they make use of the the tech magic spell freely. 
with when they use the medallion because it's kind of what oh, they do okay. in the game i guess right where yeah, it's like you know, yeah. the medallion like hums when there's like magic runes nearby and that sort of shit or, or like magically hums when there's monsters nearby uh they've also D D fight all the fucking signs so art axie igni very fucking cool um at level three you get a subclass aka a witcher school uh you can choose from the cats griffin or the wolf um it's fucking cool man it's fucking cool and i want to definitely run something set in the world of witcher with just having like three three or four maybe more like witchers that all have like a different subclass so different schools so they do different different shits just fucking hunt monsters together bro um at like higher levels they get to craft their own potions like swallow thunderbolts like all kinds of potions from the from the game blade oils and that sort of thing uh, Damn, at level like nine like they get to choose out. a a witcher blade style so you can either go fast heavy or evasive uh, Cunning Strike, uh, Monster Slayer. Dude, it's so fucking cool. Oh! That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, it's very expansive, but it's so cool, man. Does it go all the way to level 22? Yeah. yeah. That's dope. Is it, is it just... You could actually run like a full-fledged Witcher campaign. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. Is it, is it just Witches in terms of like, class-wise or? Yeah, it's just a Witcher class and then there's like, there's School of the Cats. Uh, which is completely completely like finished. There's like up to level 18 new stuff that you unlock with it. There's School of the Griffin. Uh, there's School of the Wolf. Uh, and then yeah, there's also uh, supplemental schools. So schools that I guess got added later on. There's also School of the Bear now. School of the Viper. Yeah, so there's five five different schools. So if I could run like a, an, a one shot in the Wishy World and have five players and each of them plays a different school, I think that'd be really fucking dope. I think it'd be that'd so be sick. So dope. Um, yeah, looks fucking sick, and I want to do something with this, so I think that might be what I'm going to do in Charity Select. I might homebrew the fuck out of, like, the adventure itself, just have it play out in the Witcher world, but make a mission of my own, um, for the players to, to pursue, but... Are we going to have to clean a cast iron pan? <laughs> Can we romance Yennefer? Only question I care about. Maybe. But um, yeah, I'm running that. I'm running that. Um, so I'll probably use the same formula I always do: two dungeon select players and then three people from the community. Um, it's typically how I do it with these charity one shots. So uh, we'll see. But it looks fucking awesome, and I can't wait. That's fucking dope. But yeah, uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about our campaign, shall we? <laughs> Hey, for it's, yeah. uh, it's, I mean, it's you have a campaign. It's still part of the channel. Mm. It is, it is, it is. <sighs> right. So last episode, episode 23, uh, you guys started your travel to... Uh, or continued your travel, because you traveled to Southwold the session before. You yeah. continued your travel from Southwold um, to get to Lake Udina, but the first stop on the way would be New Datamuth. Um... Ran into some things along the way. Um, fought off two massive hill giants that uh, seemingly not long before you guys arrived uh, at the battlefield, so to say. Made, made victims out of a, a just a very unfortunately timed trade caravan of uh, different ores and uh, that sort of Poor thing. Guys. Um in which, uh, when searching the wreckage, wreckage and, and finding where the actual carts were, um, finding, you know, dead horses, half-eaten horses, and that sort of thing. Besides its usual, you know, silver, gold, iron ores, and gems, you also found a couple very potent magical ores called Arcanite. Arcanite being a resource uh, native to the new continent, Agrend. Uh, and has untapped potential, and scientists slash wizards have only just begun tapping into the, the the potential that lies within this resource, because it is a very dangerous resource to refine. Um, things tend to just blow up if you fuck up the refinement of this uh, of this resource. Sounds about right. Um, so of which Jax managed to pocket a bit. I don't, did the um, party know I pocketed it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Pretty sure they do. Um, I, just, I just didn't want to have to like tell them. 
I don't, I don't think everyone was there when you pocketed it, but I'm pretty sure a Lazarin definitely was, and I'm pretty sure I headed over as well. Lazarin stayed at the cart, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, Lazarin was like, yeah, no, Lazarin was the only one that yeah. stayed. Davian watched me do it. A handful, yeah, like, I think a handful of the people in the party have definitely like saw you, and I think you also yeah, like, mentioned cool. it to them. I don't, I, I don't care, I just, but yeah, just it's a very, it. very um, new, unknown resource with a lot of potential. Um, he then continued your trek after a night of uh, campsite shenanigans in the form of spin the bottle, which was pretty, uh, pretty cute. Spinning the bottle, getting to know some more of each other's uh, secrets. Um, it was very cool. It was a cool way to kind of like do a little bit of a, a backstory, like expose, I guess. Be like, oh yeah, uh, you know, why are you traveling, uh, Jax? Uh, oh yeah, this golem, whatever. Uh, for instance, <laughs> very fun. Um, you then continued on your second day of the three-day trek to get to uh, New Daramuth. Uh, and on the second night, as you were about ready to go to bed, you heard some rustling in the in the bushes and a devil uh, with wearing chainmail, all kinds of knives hanging from his belt weird explosives and a big old gun that looks very alien to all of you stepped out and that's where we ended uh, for those that paid attention and uh, will remember that I, I this character or this type of character has made an appearance before back in campaign one um, but then got defeated by uh, the heroes of exile um, but as often is the case when killing a devil anywhere that isn't the hells, there's their 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 being travels, but their essence, I guess, travels back to reform in the hells. And uh, the only way to really permanently kill most of the devils is by killing them in the hells, yeah, which yeah. Uh, didn't happen. So um, we disintegrated him, right? I think I did. He got yeah, he got disintegrated. Yeah. But uh, obviously, disintegrate doesn't really do anything to the no. soul or essence <laughs> of a devil. So that that's still you know. That. that still happened um and uh i mean what does he want we'll find out on sunday i guess i won't oh you're not here but you can i'm watch not the here vault. dude that's why i'm like i'm freaking out a little bit because i have no control over what happens Jax is gonna sleep through it don't worry <laughs> I my just, man hit, I, the, I, hit the oval team dude, i'm genuinely hard. worried because i know we can't fight him but i'm worried that either I mean, you can brooks fight him. The heroes of exile beat him why would you be able to beat him yeah yeah okay what um <laughs> what, no, what why because i mean well first of all he's got a big ass gun who knows how much that's gonna fucking hit us for I'll you know? pull, I'll be and fine. most of the party they're kind of squishy you know we've got maybe like two three people that can actually take a hit and everybody else it's like you know one fireball you're probably dead yeah but like you know? the whole the whole thing is like i had to rebalance him of course but i feel like you know yeah, no, no, no. Got, I mean, got, like, he got, obviously, he got, he got killed, sent back to the hell to reform, and I guess you yeah, know, with so he that probably got came a bit of a power downgrade. So he's a yeah. um, but like, he's beatable for sure. I don't want to fight him. Let's put it that way. I don't want to find out what all that shit does that he has. Yeah, I it's mean, one of those things where. It's but like, I also have no influence over what happens because I won't be there. So yeah. it's like I trust DM to not put something in front of us that will blatantly kill us without at least giving us a hint of like. Maybe we should fucking run from this. Yeah. Yes. yes. But, like, I would I want to fight him with this group at, like, full strength as he was last time? Fuck no. <laughs> no. I mean, we were, what, like, 16th level when we fought him last time? Something? Like 10 And we still had someone... Him. Nicole got disintegrated in that fight, didn't he? Don't think then we had so. to wish him back. Was that then? Pretty sure that was that fight. Like, Koi was trying to tell me it wasn't, but I'm almost positive it I was. I don't remember. Wait, maybe I can... Someone who doesn't have a job, go back and check all the VODs. Okay, I, can just, <laughs> I, can check the, I can just check the notes, I guess, from last campaign. Yeah, I just... Does this dude have a name? Do we know it? I, know you just I don't even remember what his name was then. I don't think we That's ever cool. found I out. I looked for this, and his name did not come up. It did not last come up, yeah. Was he, saying, uh, like, we didn't really got, get... Basically, he died before he could make it formal deductions. <laughs> yeah, because we just okay. fought him. Like we didn't even try to like talk to him at do all. We, I don't think. Like, does he have an actual name? Do we get to know his actual name? He has to a find name. out on Sunday. Yeah, he has a name. 
we won't get to know it until you guys ask him on Sunday if he introduces himself, I guess. I'm more curious who he's hunting. That's where I'm like, hmm. Because, like, obviously, first guess would be a Lazard, right? It's better with people. Big, expensive battle. I don't, know. I, I don't, I don't remember when... Uh, but then, when the would, uh, I don't remember either. I'll, would I'll a look religious it up cult... Hmm? Yeah, he's got, like, a religious cult after him. And they probably have... And, like, they, you know, they run shit. Right? So they probably have decent enough money to be able to buy the guy off. But... Who knows what the fuck Kess and Diagon are involved in. This could be against their organization in general, and they just got picked off as targets. Right? With this Crimson Lotus shit that we have no real idea how deep or far this... Dude, I love that. They won't talk I about love it that at all. Crimson they won't stuff, talk dude. about it. it pisses the me worst off, so. part is that, like, <laughs> you're like, they won't talk about it. I know out of character that uh, Kess and Brooks are going to have to have some conversations about it. Yeah, I know. See, and but that's your thing, though. It. You put yourself on their radar. Jax doesn't want to, like, push the boundary to the point where he makes himself a target because he knows how people work. Because, like, if someone did that, you know, someone, you know, would go into Jax's business back, like, when he's in, like, some town or whatever and wants to, like, know more about you know, the captain and shit, they would have fucking killed him immediately. I don't give a fuck. Brooks didn't put himself on their radar so much as Jolly made a fucky wucky. Yeah. And, and then, Brooks reacted. And Brooks, you know, was being Yeah, but then you started, it, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still fucking No, dug Brooks that was hole. just like, you mean like... Because obviously, in Brooks's mind, he was like, I wouldn't say something unless I meant to say it. So why would... And then Yeah, but you still Jolly... dug that hole, right? Like... Regardless of how the semantics, you still dug that hole. I think I think but, the blame is on But yeah, Jolly, those man. are my guesses. It's either someone targeting the Crimson Lotus or it's someone targeting the Lazarin. One of the two. Maybe the Crimson Lotus have sent this guy to kill Brooks. <laughs> that would actually be fucking funny. <laughs> um maybe. I'll let that happen. Um so before we uh, really get into some stuff that I wanted to bring up, do you guys have any questions perchance? Anything about the last couple of sessions that you're like, oh, When's our next level up? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we do Reach something worth leveling up. Milestone, lol, dab. Uh, if I had to guess, I mean, it's going to be probably at the after the lake. It's going to be right? parked out by the lake so that... 80 miles from I mean, Santa Fe? Yeah, so that, that Davian can get his multi-class. It's just probably. because... I think the last level up we had was when we did fucking Fear Crag, right? Which, yeah. since then, ago. we've had a lot of sessions of travel and... No, okay. Had like five it sessions. It wasn't that long ago, but that's like just before winter break, I think. Yeah. And then we've had winter break, and then we've also had a week off, and it feels like it's it been it's been like four or five sessions. Yeah, but it's been it. like a month and a, and a bit. Uh, yeah, sorry, like two months. But I mean, yeah. most level ups are going to be a few months, anyways. Like just story wise. I mean, yeah, the like the thing is about long long leveling is just like I typically level you guys up at the end of like a story arc. That's typically how I do yeah. it. Yeah. So. Well, XP leveling is just kind of lame because it means you basically kind of have to be a little bit of a murder hobo. No. Yeah. No. I I mean, it depends. I well, not like DMs random do. like civilians, but like you kind of are more incentivized to no because the way I would do it then is uh, is there's an encounter. You get it for resolving the combat, regardless you get it for resolving of how it the ends. encounter. Okay, so just resolving. Okay, yeah. So that that'd be a different yeah. way of doing it. Like even um, avoiding like if you, for instance, there's like. Uh, oh, there's a fucking bandit camp along the way. If you creatively find a way to avoid conflict at all, that would also result in you guys getting experience points in that case, because you, you... Fair. Okay, yeah, I've, I've just never... Done, XP leveling never worked that you way. When won the before, encounter. So like, you won the like... encounter, yeah, I guess, yeah. But I love yeah, like no. milestone leveling way more, because it makes you level up through Agreed. storytelling, and it's, it's way better. I like yeah, milestone leveling. leveling. I don't think there's anything wrong with how it's done. I understand why we haven't got a level up, and I agree with the decision. But However... Uh, I Ethan just up. wants wow. cool things. That's what yeah. It it, I mean, so do I, dude. Those... I get level two spells next level up. That's huge for me. I think I'm going to take another... Uh, see, the problem is, right? I'm really torn. Mm -hmm. Because the next level in Monk for me means I get a feat. And the feat I want is going to be cool as shit. Mm -hmm. But I also want to get to my third level in Barbarian, which is going to be cool as shit. It just means the second level in Barbarian is a bit shitty. Okay, so, you, right. so right now you're a three monk, two, or one barbarian? Yes. So I'm probably okay, going to go Okay, so you get reckless monk. attacks? Yeah, that's about it. I, I mean, that's probably, still really nice, though. I would probably go, since the, the barbarian archetype is two levels away, and the feat is one, I'd probably go for the monk level first. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go monk, and then I'm going to go barb barb. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to go monk twice, though, because out. don't you get extra attack at monk five? 
True. But so then you probably the want to go is... two there first and then wait on your barbarian archetype. Honestly, with how combats have been going recently, I might just rush Bob. That's fair. Because like Because you're gonna go totem of the uh, uh bear, right? I think I'm gonna go bear totem. Yeah. I think I really, really thought about it from a like a an RP point of view, and I don't think there is a single subclass mm -hmm. that fits with the character idea I have yeah. apart from Frenzy. Yeah. And yeah. Frenzy third level dip with monk is it's a waste. The fact there's no I, like drunken barbarian subclass is kind of amazing, honestly. Yeah. Um but if I go frenzy, the only subclass feature I get at third level is that I can go into a frenzied rage, which lets me attack as a bonus action. Which you as a monk already, which which I can already, already do as a monk. Do yeah, as a monk. So it's it's a worthless pick. Yep. So yeah. I'm just gonna take the one that seems like the best third level dip because uh, between the entire group, it was either this or Zealot. And I feel like of the two, I can flavor Totem to just be he's hard to damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas All if the I alcohol start... makes him not feel the damage, you know? Yeah, whereas if I start doing fucking radiant damage, that's a bit harder to flavor. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, because you don't, you don't have any, like, god affiliations or anything like that no. here. So. Brooks knows that the gods are a thing and believes that they exist and, you know... He's he checks. knows it's a thing because, like, he feels sicky -oo -oo when he goes onto a church and, you know, like... But he doesn't give a shit about them, as far as he's concerned. Like, none of them have actually done anything for him, so why should he care? Fair. You know, like, none of the gods have turned up and bought him a drink. None of them have been like, hey, if you pray to me, I'll give you this, that, and the other. He's very transactional in that sense. Yeah. Oh, have we missed anything, like, the last couple of sessions? Like, anything, like, kind of, like, you were excited for, maybe? That we just, like, skipped over? <gasps> I know we do that on occasion. Not really, because it's just mainly been like exploring town and and traveling. So there's not really been That's much true. Yeah. Uh, that you missed per se. Okay. But um, I just know that we did tend to like rush things or look over a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, no, I you guys do that, but that's typically when you're like dungeon delving and shit, and you haven't really done that. So um, no, not really. So okay, both of your characters, you know, got get got you know ex. Some shit happened. So we'll start with uh, you, Soko. Okay. Okay. First Something time happened. Jax opened up about, you know, the whole golem situation. Yeah, yeah. I knew yeah. I knew it was gonna happen when we started playing, and like the types of questions people were asking, I was like, ah, oh, it's gonna come up. I don't know yeah. who's gonna well, ask it. I was it. the one that asked you the question, but I was like, oh, see, dude. that's the thing though is I think Siren was like the only one that I was like a hundred percent. She that's she would a hundred percent ask that. Because that's that's what I brought up to her the last time we were really around was at the dancing hall, right? Yeah. Um, and it's one of the only act interactions me and Siren have really had together. Mm -hmm. um, it, other than really just like party group though. interaction. Like what? it really makes sense for Siren to be the one to pry. Yeah. Because everyone else is sort of settled into this routine of like just not asking Jax about it. The only pe <laughs> as a group, the only people we pry into are the ones that try and hide on it. Jax yeah. has never like outwardly made like. I don't want no. to talk about that. He's kept his mouth so shut, nobody... but he's never... <laughs> but he's never, like, he's never refused to talk about it. And then people have gone, why? Why don't you want to talk about it? And then, like, had that interest to pry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Brooks has done the same thing, where, like, he just won't mention it, and people won't bring it up. Yeah. And then you've got fucking Elazarin, who's like, oh, well, uh... And everyone's like, no, you need to spill now. Like, <laughs> fucking tell us. Same thing with Gats, where it's like, oh, you're being yeah. shitty about some shit. Yo, spill. Yeah. Whereas the best thing to do in a group of chaotic assholes is just stay under the radar. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It feels kind of weird to talk about it, honestly. Because I feel like it's... Well, first off, they don't know whether my family's alive or dead. Right? Because we never got into that. Because I was like, oh, that's going to take another question. And I never got spun again. So, you know, there's always that out there. I expect that to probably come up. Not next week, obviously, because I'm not here. But, you know, mm -hmm. it'll probably come up in one of our travel sessions, I'd imagine. <clears throat> Yeah, no, yeah. Um, but, um, but, yeah. So, I want to, you know, obviously, as Jax, uh, he's an old man. He's, you know, talked about his, his pirating <laughs> escapades a lot. He has. Um, this is the first time he really, he really talked about, like, you know, the reason he, he gave up on being settled down, you know, with the missus 
and it turns out that there's like a whole like there's there's some drama there uh, that the party now knows about um do you think this means and will result in jack's um potentially because it's no secret that this whole golem thing is something that jack's wants to resolve or like wants to you know find out more about at least at the very least um, do you think that now that that initial step has been made, and the party knows of this golem and how it just wrecked your village or town where you where you uh, where you lived? Um, do you reckon that this is like a, a stepping stone that Jack kind of Jack's kind of needed to potentially in the future ask the party like, hey, I could use some help with this because this means a lot to me. I think so. Um, and like people know, I kind of asked Sai about it when he was around. Like if mm -hmm. he hears anything, let me know. Um, but I, I think Jack's kind of always planned to help have Davian at least help just because he's like, you know, he's a ranger. He's good at tracking, mm -hmm. you know? So if we did come across something that was somewhat similar to might chase that end and, you know, have to reveal it then. But yeah, I think he was just kind of ignoring it because we've always, you know, someone else has always kind of had a problem in that Jax could attach them himself to, mm -hmm. right? To kind of just like push it to the background, you know, ignore it a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, because we've been chasing Davian's tears. Lazarin's had his, like, oh, we got to hide him from the spiderweb people. And now the captain's approaching about taking care of, you know, the other unfinished business that he was like, I could let this lie, but this could be a little fun. And, you know, I do miss sailing around and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I think this opens the door. But I also think Jax is still kind of just waiting on that to kind of see what happens. Just because we don't really have anywhere to start with it yet. Mm -hmm. Besides maybe traveling back there. And we have enough to do for the next, you know, month or two, probably. For the foreseeable future. Before that, like, really yeah. comes up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. So, yeah, it's just somewhere down on the timeline, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, What just happened? OBS just changed my exposure for no reason. Yeah, I don't know. I also noticed that you're camera is like too i don't know did you kind of grow what the fuck happened okay i don't know what happened but it's like it just defaulted all my settings off yeah what the fuck dude <laughs> what? Right. we're good um ethan hello brooks uh you know he uh got a letter got a notes we just got a letter okay i got two questions oh. one is what does brooks think this is all about and what does ethan think this is all about or like what's gonna happen um, out of character, I'm pretty sure I know. I'm pretty sure that it's very clearly linked to the conversation that Brooks had with Kess and the conversation that Jolly had with Kess and Dagon. Mm -hmm. Brooks suspects that that's what it's to do with. Okay but isn't 100% because obviously he doesn't recognize the iconography. No. The only reason that he has to tenuously put two and two together is that it's the Weeping Muck. Yeah, true. Which true. is where he met this individual. Yeah. So, a certain person is mentioned, he sort of shows that he recognizes the name and is told yo don't do that shit don't get involved feigns that he's not interested in it to Kess who mm -hmm. I think was sort of expecting more questioning from Brooks but Brooks is just trying to downplay it as no I'm not interested there's no reason to pay any attention to what I do or to see me in any way as though I'm going to get involved I'm just going to pretend that I don't care mm -hmm. and then the next day he has a note Telling him to go to the same place that he met this person. Yeah. So I think I think that's I think I out of character am like unless you're gonna do the big DM like plot twist on me, I think I know what it's about. Mm -hmm. Brooks is tentatively confident. He, it makes sense. The numbers add up. But he's leaving in the possibility that it could be entirely unrelated. But I'm sure happen? that like, what do you think? You know, what do you think will happen? As far as in character, or out of character. 
Oh. Um. Okay. Out of character, I think that when we go into New Daramith, uh, I mean, obviously, we're looking for God. What's his bloody name? Um. Brooks and Kess are going together to look for someone that I can that I can't bloody remember the name of. Um. Who the is steed? also? Hmm. Is it the steed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who is also, if I'm not wrong, a part of Crimson Lotus. But so it's, obviously, yeah, that's an assumption. So we're going to be looking for that, and that's going to bring in the discussion of okay, we're looking for this sort of iconography. So I think Brooks yeah. is then going to like sort of put two and two together because he's going to realize, oh, that means this group, and therefore. That must mean that this is from this person. When they actually get there, as in like back to Eldalon, mm -hmm. out of character, I think it's going to be a conversation of look, someone fucked up. Now you know stuff that you shouldn't. There's an opportunity to potentially get involved. If you don't, that's fine, but if you ever mention this again, we will have you brutally murdered in the street. Yeah, okay. I'll give you a little bit or, of like insight on... Sorry, go ahead. Or the other option is it's going to be a join or die sort of shit. I'll give you a little insight in, in the Crimson Lotus, right? Yeah. Crimson Lotus is this, like, super secret um, organization that's, like, even things like the Thieves Guild or, or like, you know, Assassin's organizations are like eh, they're not real what oh. yet they have people everywhere um they used to work for uh the trickster god trifle he uh if anyone makes a fucking dessert joke i'm hanging you by the way um he ruled this organization as like a a thieves guild with benefits uh that's how that's how the crimson lotus started they were a a thieves guild who just happened to fall into the good graces of a god of trickery um who gave them certain blessings but then due to the actions of uh due to the help of a different adventuring party we all know uh elsenil got her hands on um some magical artifacts which she then used to overthrow Trifle. And now she is the goddess of, of, of that domain. And with that, she inherited, I guess, um, the Crimson Lotus. And what she's doing with it um, is instead of being Thieves Guild, she rules this organization as a group who seek out artifacts in the world of man, who A shouldn't be in this world or be if they you know are in this world make sure that they disappear because of the fact that these artifacts are just way too dangerous to be potentially falling into the hands of mere mortals that's that's her that's her shtick that's her thing um and if it just so happens that things give her more power yeah you know so be it um, <laughs> <laughs> and you're on this new land uh it's with with like only nine only ten percent of this land charted the rest is all fuck knows what's the, what's there there's gonna be a lot of artifacts hidden away in the jungles or in the mountains or in underwater wherever the fuck it may be that um as they appear on Elsinor's radar, she, she's like, okay, I need people to go pick that up, which is why the Crimson Lotus is such an active organization with people everywhere in this realm, because there's so many fucking artifacts here that people don't even know exist yet. That, so we need to bring our shovels and start digging. Pretty much. Um, and I... Uh, I have big plans for this organization, this campaign, purely because the, the way I want to go with the story... Um, like the overarching like long term plot line big bad evil guy all that shit I want to involve the Crimson Lotus heavily which is why um, two of the party members backstories uh, slash session zeros introduce them immediately 
and the idea basically is to kind of like breadcrumb expose the party to this organization throughout the campaign so that, so that they eventually get to a certain point of um, everybody knows about them and 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 coexisting slash working together because uh, yeah that's kind of the goal here which is why I just like there's a lot of stuff regarding the Crimson Lotus which is why I purposely made Jolly slip up because I wanted the name or I wanted people I knew Brooks was like because I, I knew Bro Brooks met this man so I knew I knew if Jolly so mentions that name to Brooks is gonna I fucking pipe up about it I knew if Jolly slips up and says that name Brooks is gonna pick up on it and you did. And that's this. I want to. That, that's that, that was full on the goal. I wanted Brooks to fucking say something about it so that I had a reason to shove the organization in his face. Hey, let's have a chat. Yeah. And and the, the basically, um, you know, with with Kess and Daigon, it's no secret they are, you know, a part of it. They, you know what I mean? Like that's that's not a secret. I think everybody knows that. Um, or at least work with them to a point that is more than just a partnership. Um, yeah, like out of character, everyone knows that they're in deep and yeah, exactly messing around with them. Like, I mean, I don't think any of us know how. Instead deep, of but, yeah. Um, yeah. what I did in campaign one was I, I I threw you guys a lot of like underground organizations that were all pretty bad, but and. The organizations that were like good were made mo mostly like you know, um, the light. law enforcement, the fucking empress, her fucking personal squadron of goons. I wanted this campaign because you're in a new land. I wanted I wanted everybody to be like okay, this is like shady organization, which is a scary organization, but they do good for the world. I I wanted that to be a thing, and I wanted. That that, that 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 like realizing that and like the, the whole having to trust them because you really don't have another choice maybe not wanting to trust them but having to trust and coexist with them because at the end of the day you're fighting the same fight kind of thing that's kind of the that's kind of what I'm, what, what I'm working towards with that um with a lot of cool you know twists and turns and surprises along the way um it's gonna be it's gonna be fun it's gonna be good it's gonna be good like because I have I know where I want to go with the uh, the overarching story. The whole backstory of Agrand, or like, I, I opened the campaign with for eons, this land had been hidden by an elemental who controlled storms and weathers so that at the island, or the, yeah, I mean, it's a big-ass island, right? This continent's a big-ass island. The, the continent um, just remained hidden and nobody knew, nobody knew that existed. But suddenly, this st these storms stop. Suddenly, these elementals stop doing that. Why? Like that was literally the opening like scene setting I did for the campaign. So you, that there's something there that I want to eventually get you guys to go through, because that is that is like the pit, that's like the main thing. Is there's a whole lot of reason and a whole lot of shit happening causing this continent or this elemental to be like I'd either be like now's the time because I need help or B maybe somebody something killed it maybe something else going on but that is literally like that has been the core like idea for the plot since conceptual conceptualizing the campaign um and you have not spent like we we're 20 plus sessions in that, that has never really come up because that is like that is such a long-term thing and there's been things put in motion at, like alongside you basically to like lead up to certain things and when it all like I dude when like a year from now or more when it all like you guys like look back and like it all comes together and you're like oh so that's why that happened oh that's why that guy oh that dude I want to blow your minds and that's what I'm working towards. That's what I'm working towards. So we need to you're fuck gonna it up fucking up no, you're gonna fucking um there's gonna be this big like poof, here's the plot. This is what actually is going on. And you're gonna look back and you're gonna find all these things throughout the timeline of 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 the still unnamed group. Uh that hopefully by then we'll have a name. Um the ragtag fuck with. Yeah, that's uh you're like So that wasn't a coincidence. That wasn't a coincidence. That 
that's what I want. And dude, I'm it won't happen because we won't I'm ever have a name. You guys are literally going to like look back and feel like holy fuck. And that's what that's the reaction I want. That's the reaction I yearn for, which is why I'm trying so fucking hard to basically. Nothing is a coincidence. Everything that has happened so far happened for a reason. Every quest you've gone on or every NPC that has shown interest in your group has done that for a fucking reason. And that's going to be continuing throughout the campaign until it all reaches like this climax of holy fucking shit. Can't wait to find that's out the what the fucking... Uh, uh, the waiter, uh, the fucking elegant carafe that Brooke slept with is actually like a fucking... Air elemental in disguise. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, like I can't wait to find out it was Kess's like. grandpa that was hiding Grand in the first place. You mean the one that doesn't uh, exist? <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. Uh, I can't fucking. I love, the, I love just Jack's not believing in literally anything that's not correct. Yeah, it's so the, much the fun, thing is, dude. The thing is, like. Because. Or Guess's dad, I guess, has agreed. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm a diplomat. I'll help you talk to Isisha or Isisha's followers or whatever. So at some point, he's gonna he's gonna pop out of the vessel and be like, "Hey guys, I'm here to talk on your behalf." And what's Jack gonna do then? Yo, when Jack fuck. sees this like big ass gin that Guess has been talking about, what's Jack's reaction gonna be? So, <laughs> I still have no idea <laughs> how I'm gonna react to that. Okay. <laughs> And I'm really hoping it's a session I'm not there, so I don't have to. Oh, no, you're going. Uh, I'm going to make sure that you're that that's <laughs> happens when you're there. Don't worry. <laughs> I Honestly, I can see Jack Zeva being like, I've changed my beliefs in light of new evidence. That yeah, sounds like Jack. I want to do. <laughs> or it's just an illusion, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's fake, dude. It's not real. She it's cast real, illusion bro. magic. Bro, they weren't actually on the moon, yes, okay? Well, oh, does illusion magic. Yeah, I mean, dude, it can I, uh, yeah. I, um... uh, for context, Soko, hmm? uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to throw this out too much, you don't support it, but uh, okay. the name that Jolly mentioned. Yeah. So, you know, we both in session zero went separate places to get our letters translated. Yeah. The notes that we found, I went to that guy. Oh, shit. Oh, it was the same yeah. guy? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, this guy hung out in, in session zero and he's got a cool as fuck bodyguard. And now he's gonna pipe me. Uh, he's, I gonna, mean, he's gonna have a I Moxidon Brooks bodyguard fucking it, thank you, bro. With his fucking. With his trunk? It's with his trunk. Yeah. <laughs> I would say with his tusks, but like the whole thing about him was like his tusks were like cut off and he's, he made them into daggers that had yep. his belts. That's kind of the. That's, that's what I. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I was gonna so say. You, I can, you can make out while he pegs you. <laughs> true uh but yeah you, so, how, how does one make out with a locks on? like do you have to hold the trunk up out the way i, I feel like you like i feel like the locks on probably like curls you in and like cuddles you like almost like big like wraps you. the trunk around you, ever you? Seen, yeah have you, seen, have you ever seen an elephant like eating a like fuck like a melon or something it's kind of like that yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> like, wraps, you, wraps the trunk around your head and just shoves you in there you know? why, isn't you there in. A why isn't there a locks on <laughs> working at the fucking friendly giant dude i want to okay. play locks on again that was fun Oh yeah, you played Loxon in the fucking Ethan's campaign, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah. I want to play a monk at some point too, but I got, I got other plans, man. You can't. Monk's, like, if you make a monk in this campaign, you're maybe as a backup be... character, I'll bring in a monk just for fun. Just so we have a half. Just so we have three monk. months. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I'll play the uh, Mario monk. I'll go. Uh, is it what is it? Sun, sun, way of the sun. Oh, uh, oh, so you Sun's can like oh? fucking spit like fucking fireballs. Yeah, yeah I can ass. shoot fireballs. I can just be Mario. I'll be an Italian plumber who's Stop. uh. <laughs> Stop. Um, okay, I have, a, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, so next session, you know, you're going to deal with this devil man. Um, and hopefully get to New Daramuth and do what you need to do there. What do you... How do you expect? What do you think? Because there's a lot of things that could happen depending on, you know... If people get seen, how does this confrontation with this devil man gonna go? Blah, 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 blah. I think... What do you think is, like, something... <sighs> well, I'm trying to work this properly. Okay, A, who do you think is the biggest liability here? When it comes to that? 
whole like <laughs> making sure that people don't notice that we're there and b um like do you think something is going wrong or do you think like i'll be all right it'll be it'll be i i think a is the biggest liability for sure 100 percent, because he's the reason we can't actually go in the city mm -hmm. so one i i think the most likely you know theory at this point is that this guy is here to kill slash kidnap a Lazarin. With the information that Jax has. And that I have for that matter. Because I I don't know any bad. Like, I mean, and no one else really has anyone hunting them. Like, actively. That you know of. Yeah. So it's like... Like, what if he's one of Brooks's scorned lovers, dude? You don't know that. No. They <laughs> might know, be scorned... Ah. I, I'm still waiting on uh, oh, who's the chick from the letters. That's how I wait. That's how I'm waiting to show up. I know it's gonna happen at some point, or we'll find her somewhere. Um, if, if we walk into a building anywhere on this continent and Alpha is in there, Brooks just turns around and walks. Yeah, but what like if, that's what that. if Alpha suddenly is a big evil? Wait, is it Alpha or Elva? Alpha. Oh, as Alpha. Sorry, is it A L V A or E L V A? Okay. Do you want me to blow your mind since we mentioned the movies earlier? Sure. Elva is the first name of the child that Aragorn blesses in the books. Yeah. That, okay, so I, that's why I was curious, because I noticed that reference, but I was like, I don't know if that's... I'm spelling it the right way. It could just be coincidence. Winky dink. Yeah, I, you know I that like happens. Throw, I like to throw book references in all of my characters' backstories. I don't think I've ever thrown a single... I, I, I think I've purposely stayed away from throwing references. Good on the references. Aber so... Abran being called Bran is a reference to a character in Brian. Uh, Darren Shan's Demonata. Uh, and... No idea what that is. I picked up on that, yeah. Oh, it's like a series of like... Uh, it's like a series of like young adult horror books by Darren Shan about mm -hmm. like demons coming into the world and like killing people and shit. Like it's really graphic for a young adult series. Hmm. Yeah, I've never read those. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know, dude. Elazarin's gonna fuck something up. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, he's just too... too posh, too controlling, in my mind. I think he's gonna... He, he's the liability here. Because no one else is really, like, too loose cannon in most of our conversations, besides maybe Jax. But I only, you know, do old man dumb things, so I, I feel like that's not really gonna... <laughs> Plus I won't be there, so I can't really do anything. <laughs> And I can't die because I won't be there. So, you know, nice to know. That's, uh, that's a fun one. Um, okay. <laughs> Instead of the usual... I, I'm, I'm trying to rework the whole, like, mini game thing we do because it ends up always being trivia related and I get yelled at. So I'm trying to think of different things we can do. So for today, I, w I figured, you know, it's it's you two. Can, uh, I'm going to name some NPCs uh, that you've met throughout Campaign 1 and Campaign 2. And I'm basically just going to see if you remember... Uh, so bad with names. Where where you met them? Same. Or where they were, or when they, you know. Okay. And like, um, just like a who they who they were sort of thing, rather than like yeah. which town. No, like, yeah. Like, who who were they, and or, or like if the place is I feel like your daddy, like, and what does he do? Yeah. So we'll start okay. with an easy one. Theano. We met her at the uh, Arcane the, Emporium. The Arcane Emporium. Magic, believe. No. Yep. Remember. I met her before Ethan, actually. Remember what town? You first. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, we met her in uh, Port. No. Sure, yeah, Port Serene, been... Right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Port but Serene I actually met her in uh, Port Segalia. Or was it the town above? The... I don't know. I think Bran first met her in. I met her Kalzir. Kalzir, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. All right, Jake. She is just white for you. It should be fine. Jesus. It's fine for me. Uh, my camera fucked up again. That's why. No, but she's talking about like the entire no, stream. like for the full oh. stream. Oh, yeah, that's no. just Bell's fucked up. It's either this or Bell's making a really poor taste diversity joke. <laughs> I could be either um, one for that matter. Okay. 
Who is... Oh, dude. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shut up, Bell, you fucking dumb idiot. Nerd. Hold on. Oh, first time, so I'm just uh, listening in. I it have looks no idea. fine That's weird. for me. What the it's fuck, fine. Bell? It's fine for me. Yeah. Bell's just Bell, maybe me. we just banned you. This is going to be a bit harder. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. You've uh, you've 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 met this individual uh, very briefly, but uh, an introduction was there. Okay. Okay. Campaign one or campaign two? Campaign one. Okay. This may have been before Ethan's time, though. Oh, was Ooh. that early on? It's Ooh. that early on. Um, if it's before my time, I might have a better chance because I actually made notes on that before I joined. <laughs> that's right, because you had to watch them all and then like get listened, ready for it. I listened to the. It, it was a Yuma. Camp. The only name you know of him is Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy and the Three Musketeers, right? Yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Hey, my what's man, up? My man, my man. <laughs> what's up? My boy, the Bards, and then didn't like Gen like shit on them at some point is as that, like a joke. Is that on the Talking road about them. I don't to... that was back the Tower. halloween episode yeah before then you met him as well you met him on the road when you were like oh that's right we like passed him. by him and then we like we saw them perform the at the Tower, halloween episode right? yeah. The chromosphere yeah you saw them yeah. when you were on the way to get the get the get the sphere yeah and then we that's they also not... performed in the town when the uh, headless when horseman thing happens. Us. yeah yeah okay another camping one npc mm. medjurn I know this name, that's the worst part. Do we get any other hints since we're both clearly morons? Mm. I Was this I before? I don't even recognize that name, to be honest. Shame I recognize the name. I'm pretty sure it's after. Is it someone that I should personally really know? Uh, Medjurn was quite pivotal to the plot early on. The plot early on? Medjurn Before or after was, I joined? Medjurn was the reason you guys learned Was Medjurn the first of the people that we killed related to the cult of Raskiel? No. No! Yeah. Wait, was it that fortune teller? No. Medjurn no. was Rokul and Mokin's dragonborn <laughs> friend who was also part of the yes! Chaos Hunters who the then got died. kidnapped by Raisin yeah. who you then tracked yeah. down and that's how you learned that there was this cult sacrificing dragonborn see that's and, that's more of that's more yeah, of he was, uh, Ali, he I was, was like, eh, cool. another, another dragonborn barbarian guy mm. yeah he was a sorcerer but yeah sure okay <laughs> yeah, he wasn't anything when we got to him if I remember yeah, he but... was an empty like a, like a dried up husk <laughs> okay poor guy Okay, okay, okay. Name, but... All right, all right, all right. Uh, that one was good, though. I, I, I totally forgot about him, to be honest. Mm. Another one for you, another one for you. This one is more recent. Um, Quirky. Oh, I am... Ah, ba, 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 ba. I remember <laughs> the name. I don't remember I... this one at all. Fuck. I feel like Quirky is... I mean, it's campaign two. I'm sure of it. Yeah, okay, isn't he like the assistant to the lady that runs things? Or he's like the bookshop guy, something like that? He's not the bookshop guy. Was Quirky the person that helped us go through the documents? Quirky uh, is the Aarakocra owner yes! of the Cartographer's yeah, Guild. Yeah. yeah. Wait, That's the Davian thing. The Cartographer's Guild? Yes! Was yes. I gone uh, for that? Maybe. Maybe? That sounds like a session I was gone uh, for. Quirky was... Davian understudied with him. Um... No, oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, I was gone that session, because then the next one, he's like, Oh, Jax, could you help me with this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm just gonna give you a first name. I'm with names. First name, all right. Or him. Fuck. I. Mm. Or him? With uh -huh. an M? O R Y M. 
I, this doesn't ring any bells for me. First or second. Okay. Campaign. I'm pretty sure I have this wrong. Which campaign? No, I definitely have it right. It's one. Campaign one. Yeah. For sure. Is this someone that we'd know if we knew their last name? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. There's a handful of things that I'm like, oh, maybe it could have been that person, but I so don't cool? remember, like, Orim. What? Is this one I really should know? Yeah. Because it's in the wrong stand. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that ever came up in character, did it? You created it. came up once. <laughs> yeah. You made the name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I also haven't played Naronk in, I don't know, dude, 60 yeah, sessions. I suppose, I suppose you had Morwen, so. It's been 60 sessions. Hey. I know Morwen's parents I, I names, but. Man. My man, my man, got exposed. Oh, dude, Naronk's parents, we met him like once. <laughs> Yeah, but like it was a pretty fucking like long arc, and it was pretty fucking like. Soko doesn't think about backstory anymore. Soko has six characters prepped for when you inevitably. True, <laughs> actually, I think that's the problem. Is like I'm always writing more characters, so. Okay. Plus, some terrible with names. Good with faces, not so much with names. Another one. Tianora. <sighs> Elf, for sure. Was Tianor something to do with... Was she the Raven Queen's person that Bran trained with? The Black yes. Dragon one? Yeah. Yeah! Fuck yeah. The no, one that almost fucking things. killed us. We You're had so summon proud of me right now, Dad. Yeah. You're so proud of me right now, Dad. Good job. Proud of you. Um... <clears throat> okay. Look, it's something I don't hear often. <laughs> Clan Stormbringer. Stormbringer. Clan? A clan, yeah. As in, like, the name, or... As so in, you like, want us to know, like, where we found them? Like, just anything, any information you have on them. Is that Nicole's oh, original... Oh, no, that's the goblin people, right? Is no. that Nicole's original, no. uh, like, group that were all slaughtered? No. Oh, up in Durash? Oh. No. Okay, wait, Clan Stormbringer. Oh, is it the Goliath that we borrowed the bloody ring from? Yes. Oh. Hey. And it's Mokin's original clan. Like Mokin. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. We had a, such a hot start, and now it's like, oof. <laughs> the, when I, would, I actually had more chance was when I wasn't campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> I remember oh, well. just the random ones. I don't know. Important NPCs forget like about them, nobody dude. and nice, Jimmy and the Three Musketeers though, I got you. Yeah, you got that one. <laughs> uh got one more. Alright. Got one more. Let me just quickly let me pick a good one real quick. Hold on. I'm, I'm mainly actually, like tapping into campaign one here because I feel like campaign two is a little too recent. It would be too easy. I think um, campaign two would actually be harder for me personally. Hmm. Just uh, just because I was gone for more of the sessions. Campaign two, just like a name of someone that like we spoke to once, Brooks. Yep. Like flirted with and then we left and didn't see again. <laughs> and we're like, no oh, idea. Okay. 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 Is. Ah, is this. Mm, okay. I mean, there's no point. Give us, give us the hardest one yet. Who is Larissa? Oh, Larissa. shit. I actually know that name. Larissa. Is that one of Actanis's. Is that Actanis's mother? Correct. That's right. <laughs> yeah. See, I wanted to say that, but I was like, oh, I don't want to sound stupid. There's My no boy. way. Like, I just got feeling. My boy. Nice. <laughs> I knew, I see, I knew it was going to go with something like that we should know, but it's like also kind of obscure. Because um, I think we only heard her name a couple times. Yeah, I mean, they lived with you in the fucking guild hall, right? Yeah, but we never called her. We always called her Actonis' mom. Never called her Larissa. <laughs> no, we never did. Okay. Larissa. I remember We're the worst kind of people, girl. dude. Yeah. Who's Uleth? Uleth. 
Ooh, Fuck. Leth. I know the name too. Like the name rings a bell. Is Uleth one of the fucking? He was the. Is is Uleth the Illithid that the guys helped in oh. campaign one? No, 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 no. They all had like two partner names. Uleth was the necromancer guy, right? You be a little more. The one that actually like had Ash come back in to the, life in and the fight us. Sort of Raskale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna say like I I know that one like because that was just a spite. I mean, listen. You know. Overall, dude, you're you know your your NPC uh, knowledge. It's like seventy five percent. To say that we're not looking at notes from either campaign is pretty good. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's decent. It's decent. I to be honest, my notes from last campaign are terrible. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Uh, and with that, I think we're gonna end it here for uh, discourse this week. Thank you so much for uh, being here. We'll start off with. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a uh, uh, teaser for Sunday. What I'll say is that out of character, this devil you're about to encounter next session isn't the only old friend that might make an appearance. Oh, I... oh cool. I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Uh, Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys on Sunday for Dungeon Select Session 24. Have a good night, everybody. And I'll see you guys for Dungeon Select Episode 25. True, true. <laughs> Peace out, gamers. Have a good, uh, have a good rest of your evening. Bye, guys. Bye.